Hey there, happy day 954 of What You Up To Now. Sharon Horn Elton here, documenting my journey as I transition from the brick and mortar corporate world of you know in America, or kind of global, like I said, I work for some global companies, to the online world of business. A couple of years ago, a couple, well, at least 954 days ago, which means over a thousand days ago, over a thousand days ago, I took the leap, and it was pretty much a leap of faith, and went all in in the internet world. I went from over a quarter century in corporate America, working for some of the coolest companies in the world, and having my own businesses. Businesses in a lot of different industries. I figured like 27 different businesses and industries and, and things I was involved in you know, very personally at a high level, <clears throat> either as an owner or co-owner, until I decided after my divorce that I was gonna go online. Part of my divorce required that we separate and get rid of all of our businesses, the things that we held together. Could we have continued to do them? Yeah. Did I want to? Hell no. Of course I didn't want to. Uh, it, it was necessary and actually just finished separating everything right before COVID. Finally got the last of our assets, except for our children, of course. We're going to always have children in common. Uh, separated for the most part and, and done. And it took took a long time, it took 10 years, it took over 10 years to get it all done and separated in a way that worked out for both of us. So uh, I want to talk about today entitlement and the whole thought and the word, the word entitlement, the belief, the feeling of entitlement. And I guess I want to just share some of my thoughts and feelings about it. I uh, have recently experienced and really gotten a, a they say belly full, but I'm gonna say a gut full of different people's feeling and believing that they are entitled to be treated in a way different than other human beings. And I personally believe we're all amazing, infinite beings. Human beings are all infinite beings. And as such, we all, every single one of us, deserve to be treated with dignity and respect and the, I guess, the respect that we're due as infinite, amazing, beings, right? It doesn't matter anything that we can separate ourselves of, about and, and make us feel different about. None of that matters because every single one of us is different and amazing and unique and special. I like to think that we're all snowflakes and we are. We're all different. We're all unique. We're all special. We all have amazing components to us and we all have some kind of crappy components to us. I have been known to be an absolute heinous bitch on occasion. Think fighting with my ex-husband perhaps maybe and I'm sure he has a totally different opinion of me than my kids or my clients or my students or people that I've worked with or my friends uh, because he pulled a different side of me out and that was that was definitely not my my best self so entitlement I'm really curious I'd love to have a conversation about the whole belief and feeling of entitlement my get up and go challenge set up for success lesson today was that nobody owes us anything. Nobody owes me anything. Nobody, nobody on the planet owes me anything. Not my parents, not my relatives, not my friends, not my teachers, not my bosses, not my government, not my organizations I might be affiliated with. Nothing. Nobody. Nobody owes us anything. You know, you might argue, hey, well, you were born, therefore your parents, it's their responsibility and they owe you taking care of you until you're old enough to take care of yourself. No, right? Are there millions of examples of parents that don't take care of their kids, that have kids? I could go into the whole abortion thing, but I'm not going to touch that with the 10 foot pole. There are, there, nobody is, there's a difference between responsibility and entitlement and people owing you anything. So that was the topic for today. And I know it hurts a lot of people's feelings that I'll be honest, it used to hurt my feelings. Don't we all want to be taken care of at some level? Don't we all think that we deserve to be loved and taken care of? And again, being loved and taken care of is not the same as anybody owing you anything. It's like when you do somebody a favor or when you donate to a charity, are you donating to a charity because you expect something in return? Are you doing someone a favor because you expect it to be paid back or in return? Are you lending someone money because you are really loaning them money? You're not 
doing them a favor, there's a huge difference in the intent and the expectation. And so I think entitlement is about uh, your expectation. And, and one of the most powerful things we can do is to give without expectancy, to share without expectancy that the person that we're sharing with and teaching and being kind to is ever gonna return that to us. Just because my ex-husband isn't necessarily ever gonna be kind to me doesn't mean I don't be kind towards him and about him. It, it's what I want to be known for and how I wanna show up in the world that's important, not that I expect something in return for that, right? It's about us being the best version of ourselves and showing up in the world the way we want to show up. And the only person that owes us anything is ourselves. We owe it to ourselves. I say we are 100% responsibility for ourselves and we owe it to ourselves to be the best human being we can possibly be. Do we start out that way? Do we always act that way? Uh, no, because we're human beings, we're imperfect and we're all a work in progress, but <clears throat> The whole entitlement topic and, uh, you know, the world owes me a living. I deserve to have free insurance. I deserve to make as much money. Life should be fair. Hey, life is not fair. Life ain't fair. It's never been fair if you define fair as equal. None of us are equal. We're all equally valuable as human beings, but we're not equal. We're not equal in how we show up in the world. We're not equal in the value that we provide to other people. We're not equal in um, how much effort we put forth, what we put into things. I remember having a conversation with my kids a lot of times during school. Hey, what you get out of anything is what you put into it. If you put nothing into a, a sport or an organization or to school, you're not gonna get anything out of it. It, it, school doesn't owe you an education. It's up to you to take advantage of the resources that are available to you and learn. But that requires that you put effort into it. If you want to earn an A, you put forth A effort. If you want to earn a D or a C and just pass, you put forth just a little bit of effort. But the opportunity is there for everyone. But no one is entitled to a, even a, a high school or a an education. It's available to you, but you're not entitled to it. It isn't owed to you that you graduate from high school. It's up to you to choose. You want to put forth the effort that would be required to graduate from high school or graduate from college or to get a job or to start a business or to do whatever it is that you choose that you want to do. But nobody owes it to you. Nobody owes it to you to lend you money. Nobody owes it to you to, to do anything for you. It's up to you to do it for yourself. Talked about that, I think, yesterday in... Um, it's up to you, it's, it's always up to you. Number one, nobody else knows what is right for you or what you want or what you want to achieve. That's the cool thing about all of us being different is we all, although we want some things in common, each and every one of us want and desire and go about how we achieve what we want differently. And that makes, that makes life and, and humanity a lot more fun and a lot more interesting. So I'd love to know your, your thoughts about entitlement, your experience with entitlement. Do you know people that are super duper rich so they think that they deserve to be treated better than other people? Hate that, by the way. Do you know people that are very, very poor or, or down on their luck right now or down and having a tough time? Lots of people during COVID, right? So many people that have never struggled before are struggling right now because of the changes that have come about in our economy and in our world. Will they be okay? Yes, they'll absolutely be fine. Everyone will figure this out. We'll figure it out together. We'll help one another. But helping one another isn't because they're entitled. It's because we're all human beings and we like to pull together and help one another to make the world a better place. So curious about what you think about that. I, I hope I hope I didn't hurt too many people's feelings, but I'm not. I'm, I'm gonna say sorry, not sorry, because so many people are being led astray and led to believe that other people and I don't know who, who people that promise these things think the other people are, owe them a living. Because some people have worked hard and created certain things in their life. Um, other entities, politicians in particular right now, being that it's a political year, are spouting out and saying, well, everyone should get all of these free services. Everyone is entitled to all of these things. But the truth is, they're saying that because the rules don't apply to them. They don't have to pay for the things that they want 
other people to pay for. They're not going to pay more taxes to cover all these entitlements and services and things that they think they're going to provide for people. They're expecting other people to do it. Other people that have made a lot of money that aren't politicians to pay for it. What a crock, right? Is it just me that thinks that or is that a crock? Uh, there is, if we're defining fair as equal for everyone, there is no such thing. The world is, I contend, inherently fair. And if we define fair as you get in return what you put into something, the value you put into something will be the value that you get out. The value you put into your life, the value you add to the world, the con contributions you make in a positive way to the world are gonna be the things that you are in return receiving. Probably not from the same person that you're giving that value to, unless it's a sale. And even if you sell somebody something, guess what? I can't tell you how many coaching programs the ex-husband and I were in where hundreds of us purchase the same coaching program as one another yet some of us actually use and put forth effort and use the information we've gotten that coaching program and made our investment back maybe five or tenfold while other people in the same exact program with the same exact information the same exact coaching didn't do anything with the information and they didn't they actually lost their entire investment because they didn't do anything with it they didn't do the steps they didn't learn they didn't do anything and they were the ones that would whine and complain that it didn't work, yet there were others of us that were making it work, the same exact information, in, in ways that the coaches couldn't even have imagined. So even somebody that sells you something can't guarantee that you're going to do anything with it. And if you don't do anything with the information, with the thing that you buy, with the product, it's like if I buy a magnifying glass or a hammer and I never use that hammer, is it the person that sold me the hammer's fault that I never picked up and used the hammer? No, that's ridiculous. But every day we see people complaining about life isn't fair because of this or because of that. And I just, I, I wanna say people, people see through and who you are when you say things like that. So just be careful and be aware of, of what you're saying, what you're thinking, what you're feeling and, and how it comes off to other people. All right, that is our nagging Sharon pontificating for today uh, fun challenge today was about how do you eat Oreos which you know double stuffed Oreos have been one of my favorite uh, treat foods since I was pregnant with my daughter and she's 26 now so for a lot of years it's actually decades I've been enjoying double stuffed Oreos and the, the challenge was how you eat them and what it says about you so I demonstrated the, my two favorite ways to eat Oreos and I asked oh, what does that say about me because I have no idea what it says about me it says I like quadruple stuff Oreos. I really, really, really like the filling. <laughs> I don't know what else it says about me. So that was fun. That was actually a fun one today because I do like Oreos. Uh, and yesterday was jelly beans. And I don't really care much about jelly beans except around Easter time. Uh, Footloose and Fancy Free was our idiom today for supersize your business. And how do you make your business footloose and fancy free? Well, to me, that was an easy one because I want to be doing the things I love to do in my business, but not the things I don't like to do. So in order for me to have more freedom to focus on the things I love to do, I want to automate, delegate, create systems and procedures to make sure that the things that have to get done, done get done, but that I don't necessarily have to be the one that does them. It's one of the things I love about being online. There are so many things that can be automated. There are so many things that can be shared with other people but I get to focus on and do the things that I love to do. I like to create these videos now. I can't believe I'm saying I like to create videos or do videos, but I actually do. It keeps me going every day, especially now that my granddaughter is in school. <laughs> I, uh, I'm enjoying it that I have something that I do every day. So that was it. Footloose and Fancy Free was our idiom for today. The other way um, our businesses can, we can automate the things that we don't love to do, but we also can add an online component. We can set up things so that they work for us. That is a, a way of being footloose and fancy free. Having the freedom to do what we want, when we want, where we want, with whomever we want, working with who we want, with uh, the internet. We've now become this global economy, this global society. So we can actually specialize and make it profitable. We can really serve people better and make it profitable by serving smaller groups and smaller niches and more specialized areas because we have access to the whole world, not just our local markets. So that was our topic for Supersize Your Business today. That's what I'm working on. I am also working on 
a new secret project. And I'm not going to share what it is today because I'm not 100% all in that I'm going to do it. But I am partly in and I'm testing the waters and tweaking and studying and researching to see is this the next thing that I want to do or not. Also, I need to get some time this week to go back over the last Get Up and Go challenges because September we're doing just a daily lesson and then October 1st through 31st I'm going to do another 30 day free get up and go challenge to make sure people have a process and a system ingrained in their subconscious that guarantees that they will be better off whenever they're faced with a change after the change than before the change so when something even as big as COVID comes along they will know exactly what's right to do for them in order to be better off after that event than when it happened. Uh, and you can use this for big things, you can use it for little things, you can use it for anything. Uh, yesterday was my 10th anniversary of my death day. I call it, I celebrated my death day. My daughter said I need to change the name now that it's been 10 years uh, to something else. But September 7th is the day that I ceased to exist 10 years ago. And <clears throat> ever since then, at waking up and actually surviving that sudden cardiac arrest event, I have celebrated this day. September 7th yesterday actually it happened on a Tuesday so it's more like this day but it was September 7th and it's a great time for me to to just stop and take a deep breath and look at and evaluate what am I doing is it on track with who I am and how I want to show up in the world or is it a little off track and and every year I get a little bit of a different sense it's part of why I started getting dissatisfied with pajama grandma and I knew that I had to show up as me not as me in pajamas because People didn't get it and and my family hated it absolutely hated it but I thought it was kind of fun and I have a fun side but it's pretty boring pretty nerdy pretty engineering and <clears throat> I guess my sense of humor definitely isn't a lot of people's sense of humor but I like to have fun with it so uh, changes with pajama grandma changes I kind of come up with a new podcast name I think we've got uh, geez over 3,000 I can't remember how many but well over 3,000 episodes maybe 3,080 I guess that's not well over but it's over 3,000 uh, episodes on Pajama Grandma podcast yet this entire year probably hundreds of those episodes have maybe close to a thousand have nothing to do with Pajama Grandma with the exception of the fun daily challenge because I'm doing the fun daily challenge on the Pajama Grandma page only because I did the year of happy every day on the Pajama Grandma page as well so two years worth and that'll be enough then we'll switch to something else any ideas are more than welcome. So that's all I've got today. Uh, go out, make it an absolutely amazing day. It's getting to be fall around my neck of the woods. So we had a cool day yesterday. It looks like a cool rainy day today. But there's still always something fun to do and some way to interact with the day to make it awesome. That's it. Go out, have an awesome day, and I will, of course, be with you tomorrow.